past. Skies, uh, we're actually supposed to have some, some rainstorms coming through later today. I got my NRS rain jacket back there. And, uh, you know, we're gonna start the day with some top water. Number five, if I get landed, I'll show you. I gotta keep that drag loose. I got small little little hooks here. Get some offer flopper. And it's number five. It would actually be higher. Oh look, he came right off. He would be higher if my hit to hook up ratio was a little bit better than it is but it's on the list because man is a whopper plopper a lot of fun so this uh let's see how big this guy is I'm gonna wet the board throw him on there real quick and say he's almost a 17 incher you'll catch a ton of these 16 to 18 inch fish here in the susquehanna on the whopper plopper this particular one it's not that you won't catch the bigs you will this particular one is the 90 Earlier in the summer, I will go small with a Whopper Plopper. As the summer goes on, I'll go bigger. I really like the 110. The 110 is is uh, is a little more durable than the 90 that I've got here. And uh, I've, I've had issues with the split rings and even the hooks themselves breaking on the 90, but they get hammered. and. Uh, the, the best presentation advice I can give you, uh, two things really, get them as close as you can to the grass beds, the edges, which is where I caught this one on, uh, and, and give it an occasional pause. As you have it out there, you're bringing it in, wash my hands, pause, and then resume. These individual little pauses, what they do is they force that follower, that fish that's, that's right you know here's the bait here's the fish and they're following it when you stop it they're forced with oh am i gonna eat that or am i gonna turn away and, and disregard the pauses are strike triggers um so is collision and that's why i say get it as close to these grass beds as, as you possibly can um, because those are their their happy ambush zones is close to the grass bed edges same thing with rocks uh, you can throw them in white water as well, uh, very successfully. But number five out of five, my top five summer river smallmouth baits and presentations is the Whopper Plopper. Very high degree of fun factor. So, numbers four and three on my top five list can be used interchangeably. And it's, it's something that I almost say I only throw when I have to, but I may not throw it very long today and you may not see me catching a fish on it. Like, it's, it's something that is super effective and it's the dead stick presentation of two different baits. One is the sense of jerk shad on the finesse bullets. 
today doesn't make sense for that presentation. I'm catching fish on moving baits. I'm power fishing successfully. When that's not working, that's when you go to dead sticking. So three and four, one is the, the scented jerk shad, the other is my finesse jig that I make, a smaller jig. One is a bait fish profile that you set out there, you set it, set a trap instead of entice a bite. You know what, if, if you haven't watched the, the video that just has the, on the, uh, the thumbnail, it just says dead stick. I'm holding the small mouth really smooth, really close to the, to the camera. The small mouth really picks up or, or takes up most of the screen and you just see the word dead stick across it. If you want to learn the details of that presentation, go watch that video. But how long have I been talking? And I just I just moved it once, and I and I should. Dead stick really means that you let it sit in there. So the the finesse jig is a craw presentation. It has the Z-Man bat wings, and you know the scented jerk shad is the bait fish. You know, you can work an area where you know that there's, there's, in particular, I like deep boulder shade. You find deep water, especially if you cruise over it and you're like, whoa, I just spooked a bunch of fish. Don't think that you've, you've blown it. You've identified a spot where they want to be, where they want to chill. And usually it's when it's bluebird skies, it's bright and sunny, it's, it's high pressure. We don't have any of that going on today. We need to be power fishing. And I, and I need to just bring this in and, and go back to my whopper plopper jackhammer crankbait, right? It should. Uh, it, and it will when I'm done talking about what I'm talking about. But when you cruise over those areas where it is, you know, where you've identified, there's a lot of fish here. They could be carp and catfish and quillback and fallfish and yeah, smallmouth. They're all going to be hanging out together in those deep parts of the pools that have that, have an occasional boulder or log, big log, big wood, and you've sent them scattering. Pull away from it. Anchor up. Get stationary. Launch either the sense of jerk shad or a finesse jig in there and keep your line taut and just it, it's okay if you've had it in there 15 minutes and you know that you saw fish there when you cruised over it, they just haven't returned yet. When they do, they're going to come in and be like, oh, what's this present someone left for me? Hmm. And, and watch them. Watch them in that clear water. Get your polarized sunglasses on, watch them interact with it. They don't eat it right away, but they will eat it. Provided you don't blink. The way that you blink is, okay moved it, keep moving it, you watch them look at it, just let it sit, wait for the pop and set the hook. So that's my numbers four and three, dead stick presentation, sent to jerk shad, and a, a craw, craw style finesse jig. Um, I tie my own, there's a video in the tackle crafting section of the, uh, you know, of the little stuff YouTube channel, dig through the, uh, you know, dig through the playlist. The tackle crafting is a fun one. If you're not going to tackle craft, the, the finesse jig that I suggest you use are the uh, micro finesse jigs by Z-Man. Great, you know, great little fine wire hook with a double wire weed guard and uh, pick, you know, pick some different trailers that look crawl-like, but stay small. That, that bat wings, the smaller bat wings, it's a good one on that finesse jig. can really fire up the, the 
bite, and if you can power fish, it's a good idea. Alright, I'll let this guy breathe. So, the bladed jig, the jackhammer, is a great power fishing presentation anywhere, but especially on this river, especially with the gold colors. For whatever reason, gold is an important color on this, this river. Go ahead. Get a quick measure on this guy and get him back in. Yeah. Let me close that mouth. He's uh, 17 and three quarter. Nice fish right in the middle of this uh, this rapid behind me. And fan casting. This is where you can really just sample a whole lot of water very quickly. Uh, the the trailers that I use, I like to match the skirt. And this one, I did a custom skirt. Uh, I tied on myself. I started with the gold shiner, which is a gold blade, um, sort of a, a white underbelly, but gold on the sides, spree pumpkin on top. But the skirt is a lot of gold bait fish pattern. And I put a, a soft plastic jerk bait on there. This one's actually the streaks. And uh, I think it's a color they don't make anymore. But there's a lot of gold color uh, soft plastics that Z-Man makes. Houdini is one of my favorites. Uh, you can put you know the diesel minnow on there. You can put the scented jerk shad on there. You can you can for sure use the razor shads uh, in muddy water. I use the palmetto bugs. Uh, but there's, you know, in, in somewhat clear water, even into a little bit turbid water, uh, I will stick with those golds. Uh, if it gets muddy, I'll go to the black with blue flake. Anything dark is, is going to get the nod. Um, just like I did with the whopper plopper, I like to get them close to grass edges. As, soon, as close as I can get them to a current seam and a grass edge, it's going to get eight. So, the jackhammer, this one's 3 8 ounce. You can use half ounce and have your current. Um, it's a great power fishing presentation out here on the river. These small mouth will love it. So, I'm switched to uh, crankbait here. And it's one of my favorites. A lot of target crayfish crankbaits, and it's snag. I'm here in current, wind occasionally gusting really strong up through this, this mountain gap. Um, fortunately, I got the torpedo here to help me get back over to the snag. And man, having that ability to, to not have to paddle or pedal. Use the use the motor, get to snags, and get back to fishing. It really equates to catch more fish over the course of a day. And you end up throwing in places that maybe you wouldn't. You might not throw it into some of those crazy snaggy spots. Number one. Number one. Number one because it catches big fish in summertime. I don't know how big this one is. He isn't small. He's definitely mad. Susquehanna smallmouth is a 
crayfish. And this crayfish crankbait absolutely catches the snot out of these smallmouth that are used to looking at the bottom. Look at that beautiful animal. They're looking at the bottom for a very earth tone nugget, little little ball of protein down there. Scooting around, banging into rocks, fleeing backwards, and the 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 one that I'm using is the live target crayfish crankbait. They don't make them anymore. And I have Marty Mood over there. I'm gonna say auditioning another one, a different crankbait by Sixth Sense. Um, it's it's actually somewhat difficult to find a, a crankbait. I'm gonna let you breathe there, fishy. That isn't bait fish colored, or if it's craw, it's got to be red. Red sucks up here. I mean, you can catch them on there, and I know Jake Harshman always wants to fight me over red works. Okay, fine, but I take the red ones and spray paint them green, olive, brown. Very green pumpkin-y. They're green, they're olive, they're brown. They're not, they're not red. All right, anchor down, because that stupid wind's gonna push me up through that rapid. Carry pliers, because uh, they're gonna, they're gonna get them. They're gonna mash the snot out of them. hit them at some funny angles. I got one more hook in this guy. There we go. That's it. The crayfish crankbait for my live target. It's my number one. I will actually, if, if this pattern is working, of digging and, and the location part of the this presentation can be those, those trenches in between the ledges. So you have these mountains up here. Anywhere you have a mountain, I'm going to let this guy go. Let me, let me get a measure real quick. Anytime you have a mountain, you're going to have ledge rocks, you know, going in the shape of the, you know, in the direction of the mountains going across. And, and that's what's behind me. But it's also right where I'm fishing. Yeah, another, that's a 17 and a quarter. Beautiful fish. Thank you for playing. We need you happy and healthy for me to catch you when you're 20 something or other. Anyhow. The pattern, the location part of it, um, probably my favorite place is to where you have a ledge rock here, it's pouring over, and right as it pours over, there's a little bit of white water there, and it, it opens up into deep water right below it. If you work along those ledges and you cast parallel and just, just grind it, these things need to be grinding. If you're, if you're in open water, if, if this is coming through deep open water, get one with a bigger bill. Grind the bottom. If you're not grinding, you're not finding, you have to be banging the bottom. That's the strike trigger. I will do the same thing I do with the, the whopper plopper and give it a pause. That's important. Um, you can fish these for sure around the grass beds like you do the whopper plopper and the, and the jackhammer. Um, but for the most part, this is the bait I'm using when they are bottom oriented and aggressively hitting, even when they're not aggressively hitting. But the, the best place to throw this thing, my number one presentation for summer river smallmouth is this crayfish crankbait right in the bottom at the base of, wa of white water that leads into a deeper trench in between two of these ledges caused by the mountain here. 